Yeah. Greg, it's good to have you on today. First, uh, for the folks who aren't familiar with you guys, who are you guys, what's your background, and tell us a little bit about your product. Yeah, so, uh, so Rig Links is a social networking uh, application for the oil and gas industry. We, uh, we launched uh, December the 2nd last year. Um, currently, the site has about, uh, at this point, it was a little bit over 400 members. Um, we are uh, located, of course, in local Houston. We, uh, the reason kind of behind Rigland's was kind of like the first part of 2017, like everyone else, you know, there was, there was a lot of, uh, kind of, uh, a discussion around and a lot of, uh, a lot of good people that I knew, of course, were around the world without a job, so, and, uh, the more I looked around at, uh, the different social platforms, the more I just became kind of unhappy with what product was provided to these people to try to, you know, to find a job or to actually locate them. So, and I found a lot of uh, kind of separation in uh, what I call what I call green zones, where our media doesn't kind of get placed into these areas. So I said, okay, well, if, if we, we'll just create one. So um, I took a uh, uh, one of my friends and uh, some other contacts, and uh, and we and we developed this together. So um, we have we normally. Normally range around uh, 1,100 to 1,200 clicks a day, so that's you know every minute and a half or so somebody's in there clicking on something on the ground. So yeah, um, I'm very excited about the future, and uh, yeah, man, it's looking good for us here. Yeah, and real quick before we go any further, for the listeners, if you got any questions that you want me to answer, like Brady did, be sure to put it below, and we will take those once uh, Red pops off here. Um, <coughs> so real quick, the app is available on Android and iOS, correct? Correct. Okay, and, but there's no web, there's no web application, right? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. It's just strictly mobile. I mean, there is <laughs> you do have the ability to log into the website and um, manipulate just your profile information okay. and, upload, and upload your resume or your CV. Mm. Things like. That. And, and so, in a perfect world, is Riglings kind of like a LinkedIn um, type society, an old pro type society for oil and gas professionals? It's, um, it's, a, it's a mix of all of it. Okay. I took the bet took the best of each one of the platforms and kind of rolled it into something that was uh, more uh, kind of uh, more specific to what we did. Okay. And it looks like, I've been on there a little bit, it looks like there's folks from really around the world. So if you're looking for folks around the world to connect Absolutely. with, that's where you can kind of meet some folks at. Absolutely. There's, uh, right now we're in, uh, we have members in 63 different countries. And what has been, tell the feedback um, that you've gotten from the listeners, uh, not the listeners, the subscribers, what, what are some of the features they like about it, um, maybe some people they've met, connections, what, what have you seen? The, of course, I think um, Kristen may have saw some of these polls, but I ran two polls about a week ago, and um, it was kind of split between uh, good content and kind of interaction, so what they're their largest feedback here is that they're getting to meet like real people in the industry. They're getting to speak to one another on a platform that's not uh, advertising anything, a platform that's not, uh, that's not kind of, uh, uh, like we would say again, I always go back to these green zones because what we say kind of gets convoluted and gets spread out and the message is not the same. You know, so it's a core group of people that works in the oil and gas and the platform is 100% of the So there's no, uh, if anyone wants to, to join, anyone's free to join, but it's all positional based. So it's uh, one of these things to where if you don't have a position in the industry or somehow you know, uh, somehow connected to a part of the industry, it's, it's almost doesn't benefit you to be there. Right. So that's a complete organic <coughs> so access to all of that. So. Yeah, I did see that. Um the poll that you posted in there about the um, good content versus um, um, interaction or however it was worded. I, I didn't see that. And I thought it was interesting because, you know, so I put out, you know, three real podcasts then I have this live show that I do daily. And so the podcasts are always interesting because, you know, you feel like you're putting out good content, but you don't know until you have the interaction. And so exactly. when I started this live show, the purpose of this live show is to get interaction from people who listen. Uh, that's why I always encourage people to ask questions, to send private messages, to connect, because um, now I always try to go meet with the listener. If I get an email and I can meet with them, I have to go meet with them like that the folks of the day. And, and 
you know, it's one of those things that new media, uh, with what you guys are doing or what we're doing, you know, getting to understand what people are actually interested in is, is far more important than what you than what you think, you know. And so, and so, it, it, so I do appreciate what you guys are doing there because it's it's very, you know, I tell people all the time when I'm recording a podcast, it's me looking at a wall. I mean, I've got someone that's in, that's somewhere, in, you know, in another city or another state that I'm talking to, but I'm just looking at a wall and getting that feedback. It's hard though to get people to kind of engage in that process because, um, you know, we're we're all busy, we're doing things. So, how are you guys trying to grow that community on your side of things? On the message, one thing I talk about a lot on the shows, especially on the Instagram feed, because this is a lot of people kind of you see on Wrigley's, folks that are actually on the ground, boots working, is that <clears throat> I was talking last night at a dinner with some some folks I got invited to, and um, I was telling them that you know if you go to the solar industry, everyone's excited to be in the solar because they feel like they're changing the world. Um, we've worked in oil and gas for so long that you know we, we forget how important it is and how vital it is, and that's one of the things I'm really working on branding. Um, not a brand, but you know, making sure we remind people of is that you know, hey, when you get up and you go work on that rig, you're saving a life. You know, you don't know exactly where that barrel oil is going, but as I said the other day, it could be the the, the, the fuel that's carrying the chopper with a heart transplant, you know, to save someone's life. Um, just as like it could be the car, the ambulance, or it could be anything. But it is. But we cannot live without oil and gas unless you basically want to live Amish, which hey, that's what you want to do. More power to you. Um, so encouraging, you know, our, our young. Our younger professionals about what's going on, and you know it's, it's important. I think that the older generation, they kind of had this, hey, we're going to do stuff. It's hard work, and we're proud of it. There's nothing wrong with that. I think now moving forward, we need to with these younger generations say, hey, um, guys, this is important. We're saving lives here, and so solar panels are fine. But we're saving we're, we're saving lives, and so that doctor cannot save the life without oil and gas, and so. Uh, engaging these younger generation, I think, is going to be very important because we want we want these smart young kids to be a part of what we're doing in the oil and gas industry. We absolutely do. We absolutely do, and that's it. and that was one of my uh, one of my passions at the beginning. That's why we uh, we're also members with uh, Pink Petro and Women's Offshore, as well as the uh, 
Millennial Network. You know, so that equality, you know, where, you know, we've been led into an industry that's been uh, you know, run by multi-billionaires that are no longer there to support the working class people. So it takes people with experience, it takes equality, and it takes a, a huge learning gap. And we, in that generation between here and 20 years from now, have to close that gap up. So someone has to, someone has to pick up the reins and move that way. Awesome. Well, look, I'm not going to keep you much longer. I appreciate you coming on the show today. Um, go ahead. Yeah, um, so I wanted to just kind of announce with Ryan and with you on, I'm sorry, I've got you on mine as well for oil continue. we got cameras going all over the place. Um, I've actually got, I've actually got um, a camera and um, a coupling oh, right, over here. Still coupling. Because I didn't have an extra holder. But so we just wanted to announce that we're doing a marketing um, partnership with Riglinks. Right now, we're going to go um, full force with Rigger Talk, Texas Oil and Gas Podcast, U.S. Safety Sign and Decal, and Rig Links. So we're gonna, you're going to be seeing a lot more media coverage um, and us supporting each other and doing cross-promotional stuff. We're really excited to do this with you. We know that you're um, setting everyone up, but your main goal for Rig Links is something that you were telling me earlier, and that's to have companies sign up and to help um, celebrate the pro-industry side of the industry and the jobs coming to <laughs> play. Is that correct? Absolutely. We want to build an organic environment to where we all benefit and we bring value to that's our, that's our only goal. Well, thank you for being on with us today. I'll let Ryan end the show. I'm back now. <laughs> You're I'm back. back. Ryan's back. back. And now back to Ryan. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Well, well, Greg, thank you again for coming on. Really appreciate it. And um, we will get you out of here. With